Welcome to A Cinematic Journey, where we explore the themes, scenes, and elements of the movies that we love. I am Peter Billingsley, alongside my very talented co-host, Mr. Nick Shank, talented screenwriter and producer in his own right. Thank you. That's very kind. Today's movie is, is very funny. Yes. Uh, and it also has kind of a sneaky amount of heart in it. The director of this film had only directed a documentary and was hired at the insistence of the film star. This movie has three actors who won Oscars for playing country and Western singers, not including the two cast members who are real, true, actual country Western singers, not to mention one very big Broadway superstar. This is the rare Christmas movie that has no snow. Which is probably good because half the time they have to make the snow. <laughs> and lastly, uh, this film was shut down for a brief moment um, as the production had to recalibrate. We will discuss that as well. And of course, the sounds, movie that we're sounds talking ominous to me. <laughs> the movie we're talking about, of course, is Four Christmases. Four Christmases. Forgive her, son, for she knows not what she's done. So we open with um, Brad and Kate, played by Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon. Yep. And they're kind of a, a super fun couple. But when we meet them, they're they're role playing. They're in a bar, and okay, we're kind of confused at first. We think, wait a minute, Vince has got glasses on. He's kind of being nerdy. Is this the Vince Vaughn that we know? No, he's role playing in this relationship, having fun. They're making out, and we see that they're kind of not really being who they are. But it seems to be working for them as a couple. So they think it's great because they maintain their spark by keeping their life kind of fun and breezy, and they've found the recipe to happiness. That's right, they take dance classes where most people are in those dance classes preparing for their wedding. They laugh at them and say, we would never get married, that's ridiculous. They even say, you know, you can't spell families without lies. Right, and so these guys are committed to not burdening themselves with marriage, kids, or letting the tentacles of their family obligations strangle them or their lives. As far as they're concerned, they've got their lives wired for sound. And what do they do at Christmas time, which is the time that most of us spend with our families? Well, they got that life hacked as well. They take a trip. They lie to their families and they say, you know, we're doing some charitable work in a tropical country so they can lay on the beach and have fun. Right. They bend the rules a little bit, a little That's white right. lie to avoid that obligation. But, but, you know, they do. They do a spin. We're going to uh, inoculate some babies here. It's all for the <laughs> greater good. Right. We'll be there next year, which was probably never going to happen. In fact, they're so detailed, they even learn just enough language of the foreign country that they're going to, to convince their families just enough that they're really doing this. Or so they think. Or so they think. But you have the fog. You have flights canceled. This live TV camera puts them front and center in everyone's homes. Their phones start ringing, it's the parents, you know, the cat's out of the bag, there's no escaping this. Yeah, it's, it sows the seeds of the cloud that's gonna it storm It sows the down. seeds of the storm cloud that's upon them. And this leads us really into the central conflict of this movie. So let's take a look. All right, he's gonna give you a big hug when he sees you, mom. I don't wanna hug you, I'm not hugging you. Yeah, he's really excited about the hug. All right, we'll see you at noon. Noon? Kate, are you crazy? Did you just commit to us to going over there at what noon? What did you want me to say? They just saw us on the news. We are obviously not inoculating babies in Burma. Yeah, but- We are stuck here. By the way, what did you say to your dad? Well, I told my dad that of course we'd be going over there, but oh, don't compare oh, your good. situation to my are situation. You me? There's a nuance that you seem to be missing here, Kate. My dad's a unique, specific animal. Your mother's not. My dad, your mom, my mom, your dad, great. Yeah, great. We have to go to all four families in one day, Kate. Huh? Do you have any idea what this means? Do you have any idea what you just committed us to? I know exactly what this means. They are nervous of their ability to survive going to all four families. And I think the the early foreshadowing of this role playing get the sense that, you know, maybe they haven't been as honest with each other about who they really are, what their backstories are. The relationship, while good, is pretty superficial. They haven't even introduced each other to the, each other's parents. That's right. You get a sense that maybe one or two of them have met along the way, but a lot of them haven't. And so for what's a three-year relationship, um, they've kept it protected. They've really kept it to themselves. And now they're about to go on this on this journey, if you will. And all they want to do is try to keep their relationship alive and able to survive. Yeah, I think that a lot of things are going to spill out. And, you know, all we got to do is get through these four Christmases. I want to say something, too, on the concept, because when I had heard this concept for this movie, I had one of those, damn, what didn't I think of that moment, right? So many people come from families where you have parents that are divorced. And even if you don't, just the, 
the decision, are we going to the in-laws or my family this year? We went to your family. The arguments and is so relatable, right? I think, and so smart because it's a debate no matter where you are in terms of if you're married, if you're single, do I go to my parents' house? Do I stay home? So to take it in a, in a good way, in a comedic way, let's, okay, let's make the extreme of it. Yep. There's four that we have to hit in one day. Yes. They all live close to each other. Stack the deck. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. No matter how many gifts you get this holiday season, you get to define how you give to yourself. For those who have participated in or have given the gift of therapy, you know it helps people become the best versions of themselves. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Christmas today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Christmas. Friends on steroids. Well, we are um, uh, very lucky to have a very lucky. guest here today. He is the film's producer. He is the film's star. He is uh, personally my best friend. Please welcome Vince Vaughn. Thank you for coming in. I feel with, like I'm with an upscale lumberjack and a Brooks brother gentleman. Oh, so I would it have, too. It worked. It you guys look together. I feel like I, I should have. We're going for. I should have maybe uh, put on a little more Christmas, but at least I got uh, the red on. You, you look sharp red. as always, my friend. Yeah. I met Pete on an after school special. I know. You know, he was. <laughs> was just bizarre. I was cast as his best friend on that one. I think they, they made you roll up your shirt to prove you were on steroids. Didn't have a budget, so yeah. short roll sleeves down, up. no we're steroids. Both so skinny back roll up. Then. Yeah. We talk? I'm pretty busy. You're pretty stupid. You're using steroids, aren't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Sure you do. Remember that Mongo nosebleed you got? Steroids caused it. I've been reading about the symptoms. Oh, right. Athlete, Greek god, and now doctor. Hey, how about best friend? I really felt like I did get my best friend cast. I know it. it's so crazy, and it, it was which makes it me kind great. of kind of have faith in arranged marriages. Although I never participated <laughs> in one, it feels like it feels like there was a you success could story. Make it here. Work. Yeah, it's a good it idea is. until you're in it. You know, you may look pretty good to everybody else, but the changes I'm seeing in you, man, they're not an improvement. You were wired all the time. You're like some doper. You don't even talk to people anymore, Joe. You're starting to scare me. What are you, jealous? Afraid I'm catching up with you? I'm gonna give you a choice. If you stop using that junk, I'm gonna talk to the coach. I'll kill you. And I remember the director's is after school special, but he took it seriously, his role, so did I. And we're like, man, we gotta hang out so we have that ease on camera. You yeah, know? we just feel comfortable like real friends. Joining the circus. Can you talk a little bit about how you got involved in this project early? Yeah, so I like the idea of it. We just sort of started to meet and customize it. We changed, you know, a lot of the families and and changed what the dynamic was and, and really changed uh, a lot of the dialogue and, and sequences. It was um, Lucas and Moore came in who were That's writers right. and... Mm -hmm. You know, we would kind of all, Reese, myself, and them get at a table. And we were doing just, you know, just really rewriting the, from the beginning all the way through. And then when they were asking me about directors, there was a few guys they mentioned that had done a lot of these kinds of movies before. When I say these kind of movies, on some level, Four Christmases is really a romantic comedy mm -hmm. because it's really about this couple's journey. Right. So I thought, well, I don't know if I want to do something that just kind of fits in a box. And with some of the writing, we were doing stuff that felt like the families were a little grittier. And and so we looked around and saw this documentary called um, King of Kong. And this director had only directed right. a documentary. That was the Donkey Kong documentary. Correct. On the right. players, the guys right. who play it. On the guys who play it. So I thought, well, at records. least this guy doesn't, he's never made a feature film before. But that could be good because he'll bring mm -hmm. something to it that isn't really... Um, predictable right so we made the decision to hire him seth mm -hmm. gordon and so we started filming the movie first the editor called me and said you know i don't know that we're getting all the coverage that we need mm. you know there's there's certain stuff we don't have they're not turning around on all these scenes and Seth was very talented, but he had never been on a traditional movie set before and then uh i made a phone call to you yeah I because peter yeah. so the, the journey i think might be, for context is 
Um, when the first movie I ever produced uh, was a movie called Made. And so I asked you to be a part of that journey. Mm -hmm. And what always made me laugh was when I first did it, Favreau said, but well, we got to go make this movie in New York. Like, why do you want to have your friend just come in as right. like a- uh, <laughs> Why are you throwing your buddy on here? Right. Yeah. Right. Like, is this just- Throwing him a bone? Yeah, throwing him a bone. <laughs> right. And this isn't going to be like a holding deal for your friend. It's getting that was funny. I, I don't right. remember how he put it. Right. But then, of course, once you came on, I mean, Peter got us locations. He helped with our performances behind the set. You were all the way through post and the edit and just, you know, such a tremendous right hand. And of course, obviously went on to do a lot more with Favreau with- Dinner for Five and Iron Man right. and Zathura and just mm -hmm. on and on and on and became such a co-collaborator. I think I was in post on Iron Man mm -hmm. at the time and you called and said, hey, you know, we're this many days into shooting. It was it was a decent amount and this many days behind. And I remember saying, ooh, that, well, well, that's not good. No. <laughs> that's not a good position. So I owed you big for that because I thought it's a tough thing to walk into because you don't know anyone. You're being asked to sort of just be a liaison, sure. you know. Make sure that you're that they're making your days, making sure that the shots and stuff all make sense and that they're doable to get through them, were people, you know, as well as kind of be there. Were people open to that when he came in? I think people were thrilled. I think the set really needed it. You know, Peter really came in and kind of ran the set. I think people, there was not, you know, we just weren't organized and, and, and communicating. It felt like they were, I, I was told many times that by, by both Seth and different departments that they were really thrilled and liked you a lot and were really grateful that Peter came in because it really allowed us to start to get on schedule and, and make the film. The most expensive line item on a budget outside of the actors is the day cost. And so each day can cost many hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if you're behind on those, it goes over budget and that never feels good to a studio. That's and not comforting, I'm sure. No. I think I started in the church sequence, um, mm -hmm. which was when they're putting on the play. And, you know, I, I think as Vince said, I had been a part of making a lot of movies and was more the, and traditionally been more of a hands-on producer as opposed to like a deal maker and then you're off. Right. So, I, and I had grown up on sets um, and I was helpful to come in and do it. It can be a challenging position, but it was great having you there. Reese was very welcoming and open to it as well, which was great. And then it seemed like things kind of picked up from there. So I could appreciate kind of where they were, but I was just happy to come in and help. And I really believed in the movie and I liked the movie um, and thought, you know, these guys are onto something special and sometimes you just need help in those areas. Camera Improv School. It's like, of course, we have Jeffrey. Hey, let's say Jeffrey hi. Kimball, our incredible cinematographer on Four Christmases. Put headphones on, you can hear him. Jeffrey Vince is here. Look out. Is that Vince? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> nice to see you. Oh, long time no see. It sure has, my friend. It's been a long, long time. How wonderful to see you. Jeffrey, you um, you have done some incredible movies, and I'm just going to cherry pick a couple from your past for contact for the audience. Shot Top Gun, True Romance, Jacob's Ladder, so many more. Boy, Jeffrey did a great job because we were changing pages on this thing literally in the mornings, right? Yeah, I do. I mean, in location. <laughs> Sometimes we would have total sets that were, were planned, and then we would all get thrown out and changed on the fly. I read these scripts really well, the best I can to get a picture of it going in. But uh, a lot of it's inspired on the day and the people you're working with, you know. You plan, but I think you're also saying that you're able to be nimble on the day. I think that's true, especially for comedies. You've been you're through right. so much and you always just had an ease about you when things were changing. And that's not always the case. Other people get wildly upset. They say, oh no, this isn't what you planned. But yeah, I just remember you'd say, okay, we'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, We'll move over here then. Uh, the school that I kind of come from, we used to be a little more improvisational. Nowadays, the place is a little corporate. It used to be a little bit looser for... <laughs> If you, if you just pay attention, you can accommodate the improvise. You just have to know what the intent of the scenes are. That's right. Uh, as a cinematographer, uh, is there a shot in this movie that's your favorite shot or a, a shot that you think kind of defines the, the whole tone and feel of this movie? Probably are a number of them. I was particularly fond of the... Uh, dad's house where they went where they went up onto that old house sure which was fascinating being a movie freak that i am i love the sets you know and that whole thing was just a, a vacant lot out there in sun valley or somewhere and they That's built right. this whole house inside and out you talked about the sets and there's you know we're set up in this movie for four distinct households a mother and father from both brad and kate um, how did you approach the look 
of each house as a cinematographer? How is something that you plan out knowing that you're going to go to four distinct locations? Well, get an adequate chance. I decide all of that before I go. Basically, I've scouted all of these locations and also the locations. The art department does a wonderful job of describing what the characters should feel like. Uh, and I love the the feel of uh, what, Sissy SpaceX house. Yeah, uh, it's sort of a California, almost looks like an old commune kind of. Yeah, art, artistic California left over from my time. Yeah, can, that's right. You can smell the patchouli. You know, it's really kind of an odyssey. There's a visual, there's really a road trip quest to this movie. So much of this movie is visually told because you're leaving your home and traveling to four different worlds. So it's, right. it's very unique. And you really wanted to be able to visually, if you turn the sound down, feel like you went on an experience with the places that you went to and the mm -hmm. things that you came across. And Jeffrey did a heck of a job of accomplishing that. Yeah, that really works. You really are, it, you really are on a trip. And it really feels like four very unique homes, environments from just the way you, the <laughs> color palette, the temperature of, of lighting and bulbs, which you used, you know, and, and each one kind of fits the energy of, of the owner of each house. As a cinematographer, that's exactly what I try to do. I'm glad it was working for you. Yeah, <laughs> it did. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for joining us on behalf of Nick, Vince, and myself. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks so much, guys. Christmas Guardian. We had such a tremendous cast in the movie. And so it's a challenge always for actors who are learning lines to kind of be adjusting and doing stuff. And just the way that this thing went and came together, this one was particularly kind of baked and changed as we went. Well, you guys were prepared, um, which was great and funny. And, you know, you've got Vincent Reese. So, you know, when you yell roll, it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to point the camera in the right place. Along with the rest of this fantastic cast that you yeah, selected. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of wild. It's like a murderer's row of yeah. cast members. And maybe not people you necessarily would expect to see in a comedy, but it's one of the special things about this. Maybe you have Robert Duvall, Sissy Spacek, John Voight. You know, and Mary Steenburgen, Mary Steenburgen all yeah. which have won Oscars. Right. I mean, it's remarkable. Right. Um, to have these people. How how did you handicap wanting them? Was there something about this quality of actor that you wanted to have in these roles? It's not just the usual suspects list of comedy actors that you would go to to kind of put in a film like this. Well, I always went to actors that were grounded in with comedy, depending on the tone, there's always room for, there's not one way to the waterfall with comedy. I, I always got a kick when people later, as time went on, would say, this is how you make a comedy. Or they mm -hmm. would like, right. you know, talk about like, what is a comedy or a comedy with heart? I always felt like once you're kind of doing, there's something, nothing less comedy <laughs> than talking about, <laughs> talking about the right way to do a comedy. Do a comedy. Yeah, do so right, there's, you know, totally. you, you have everything from airplane, that's you know, right. that's funny. Yeah. So, and then you have, you know, you know, Marty or other types of, you know, comedies that are, totally. that are kind of more character driven comedies that you, the odd couple. And, you know, there's just a wide range of Absolutely. things that make people laugh and it's subjective. So I don't think there's any, you know, we can, I can, I can laugh at very broad stuff totally. and then there can be really character stuff. But as a general rule, I like it when the characters take it seriously. If the characters are winking too hard or not invested, mm -hmm. then I don't accept the world. And sometimes in comedy, it's even more important that the That's characters right. care about what they care about. So that, you know, because isn't comedy sort of at the beginning stages a sort of, you know, surprise, you get ahead of where the audience is, is going. You didn't expect what was going to happen. So right. a commitment, sometimes a over commitment to something that's absurd is, is funny. They're really mm -hmm. committed to an idea or a point of view. So we wanted to have the heart and to ground the movie and, you know, not everyone can do comedy, but with Sissy and, and Robert and Mary Steenburgen and of course in John Boyd as well, they're all really good actors, but they have yeah. good timing. And, and also, you know, Favreau, uh, uh, Dwight Yoakam, who's an old friend, <laughs> He's um, super funny in the movie. Super good. He yeah. was great in Wedding Crashers. Was, I was yes, exactly. kind of cheating there because I knew he was so funny in the opening scene. Christian Chris, Chenoweth yeah, was she, terrific. She chews it up. Reese is great in this. She does a great job. Yeah. Katie Mixon. Yep. She was great in it. Um, and then you see a few familiar faces. Maybe they don't get as much screen time, but you, you know, you've seen Carol Kane and Colleen Camp in the Colleen mix. Camp's great. And Carol it's just Kane, a nice yeah. Tim McGraw. Tim McGraw was great. Yeah. Yeah, he was funny. Cool. I mean, you 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 had that statistic at the top of the show that you've got 
Yeah, we've got three Oscar Oscars winners to play for three Western playing, people. Right. Speaking of cast, oh. there is one person we didn't mention. And there's sort of this guardian gatekeeper at the airport. Yeah, the that's the scene the I would like to show. I know you throw the scenes, but Peter kind of came in and did a magical cameo, which I thought was so fitting for the journey. So and if when we I, could, could we take, may yes, I, may we, I, will we, you do yes. me the honor of allowing to, to throw to that scene? One of my few it? performances without glasses. So That's in, the this, only tease. in this scene, if I may, <laughs> yes. the leads of the movie are looking to go on their selfish vacation to avoid yes. family and all things that it represent. I don't make the fog. I deal with it. And the best I can do is get you guys set up with a suite at the Radisson. Okay, and they're lovely accommodations. It's right next to the airport. Do you, do you promise that you can put me up at the Radisson? That's good, honey, did you hear that? No, no, that's terrific. Would it be possible to take us out to Sizzler and get us McDonald's as a dessert? You know what Brad. I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start missing flights more often now that I know that this kind of red carpet service Brad, is available because that's please. terrific. I got a sweet the Radisson. You know what? That's not healthy, Brad, okay? Is there another airline that you're possibly affiliated with, like a sister airline that we could just transfer to? No, I'm sorry. How about you a cousin don't. airline? Do you have a cousin airline? How about like an airline that your airline's felt up before? <laughs> it's felt up. <laughs> Uh, but it's so, so interesting because you're like obviously have such a film history with with Christmas, yeah. And then you're telling us that we're not allowed to avoid family and Christmas, and and That's kind right. of saying you you're going to have to stay and deal with Christmas. It. And we right. were definitely aware of that when I was thinking of a, a fun cameo for you to come in to do. That with his screen history, it was fun to have him be the guy to say you're not going to go on the journey you think you want. You're going to go on the journey that you need. If you're running a small business, especially around the holidays, you know things can get very stressful. New customers and new heights means new problems every single day. And as your business grows and your company expands, the simple tasks you used to do in a day are now taking weeks to complete. Well, if this is you, you should know these three numbers. 36,000, 25, 1. 36,000, that's the number of businesses which have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system, streamlining accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, and more. 25. NetSuite turns 25 this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less. Close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. One, because your business is one of a kind. So you get a customized solution for all your key performance indicators in one efficient system with one source of truth. Manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need, all in one place with NetSuite. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance. Absolutely free at netsuite.com slash Christmas. That's netsuite.com slash Christmas to get your own KPI checklist. NetSuite.com slash Christmas. California Christmas. Most Christmas movies set in the snow, obviously. Right. But this is a California Christmas. It's kind of cool. There's no snow in the movie. No. And, it, you know, there are warm weather places growing up. Obviously, outside of Chicago was so synonymous with, with, with uh, Christmas as snow. So it was an interesting take on it. And it was fun to do. You know, you start off in San Francisco and then you drive really in the, in the great golden state to different yeah. families, which is, you know, California is such a big place. Absolutely. And has so many different, you know, places within a place, much more so than, I mean, every state has that, but California. I think just because of the the size of the land is is so so extreme with that. No, and you feel it. I mean, as you go through, I know as a producer on the movie from the beginning, um, it's pretty cool how different each house is. Not only in the environment, but I think thematically, each household is different. You know, it represents a different sort of um, challenge yeah. for them as they go in. Can you That's talk right. a little bit how you designed? You know. E Aesthetically, the houses, but also thematically, what was inside them for them to face. I thought of making my family kind of like what my dad's side of the family was, which was a little bit more country and, and rural and earthy and have fun with that. And just a point of view that's so funny. And so I haven't been around it. It always kind of made me laugh in that scene with Duvall with doing the satellite disc. There's that kind of thing where you just can't step in it. If you try to be gracious, and warm, then they think that you are kind of pandering to them, or mm -hmm. that they can't take care of themselves. Better than them, right. right? But then if you if you don't if you don't want to participate, then you're too good for them. That's right. There's no whether you pick door <laughs> door A or door B. They're win. seeing you as someone who does not respect them and is heading for a and problem. You're not one of them, right? Let's keep it moving. I'm starting to lose my buzz over here. All right. What's this one here? You're gonna love this puppy. Yeah. That's a satellite dish, Howard. 
Why would I want a satellite? Okay, that's not a satellite. It's a satellite dish, oh, yeah. and it's terrific because you got so many more channels. There's a lot more viewing options. Oh, you don't think I get enough channels? Well, your TV right now is a radio, so. Wait, how much is this gift going to cost me a month? Um, apparently, it's not going to cost. You. We're paying for the services, so so nothing actually. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Just because I drive a combine okay. for a living doesn't mean I need me a fancy pants lawyer's son paying my bills for me. Okay, you win. That's fine if you want to pay for the stuff you pay for it. Yeah. Whatever you want. Uh, the installation guy comes on Tuesday. He's going to install it for you. Cancel it. We install things ourselves in this house. Dad? Uh, I think you're going to want a professional to handle this technology. If you think I'm going to allow a sex predator in a uniform to wander around my house and touch my underwear, you, you got another thing coming. No, 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 no. I see you topside in five. So for the designing of that, it was the two brothers that are kind of valuing, you know, fighting. Right. And, you know, guys that were kind of gruff. We designed, you know, my character to sort of be picked on. And these are why, why we kind of are running from our past. It feels painful to the characters. And then it's also something you're not necessarily proud to show the person you're dating is sort of, you know, how you get treated by your family in these incidents. In, in this instance, we kind of designed it more to the extreme version of how people can feel. And it's what's funny, it's a comedy, so everything's to the extreme, and then there's a scene after this where she learns that your real name is not Brad, in fact, it's um, Orlando. Correct. Because you and your brothers are named after the cities in which you were conceived. That's right. So you're Dallas, Denver, and Orlando <laughs> right. is the names, and she is mortified at this idea that I've been dating you for three years, and I don't know what your real name is, and you said, well, I changed my name to Brad. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? You should have told me. Right, right. And this idea that can you truly know someone if you're not honest with them. Pick of the litter. Kate's mom's house. Um, which um, I think she describes going in as sort of a cougar den. And you definitely have not met, your character has not met them. But it also shows something in her in her background where you have these these women, right? they're not really married. They're no, kind they, of pent up in yeah, a way. Yeah. yeah, they're pent up and they kind of want it and they love having a big strong guy in the house. Yeah, you get the feeling tugging. you have the pick of the litter on that <laughs> Why don't we take a look at this clip? Sure. Okay, will you please hold him while I fix uh, myself? Yeah, what, 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 what do you want? Well, you to gotta do? hold him. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. you got him? Hang on, I just want to just fix myself here. <laughs> there we go. Uh, what should I do with him? See if he made a stinky. How do we do that? Just lift up his diaper and see if he made one. Oh, oh yeah, there's something in here. Oh, it's a really disgusting... <laughs> Jackson, oh, did you pro oh, <coughs> projectile on it? Oh, God. Did Jackson oh, projectile on it? I'm gonna vomit. I can't be around it. Okay, Marilyn, get him some water. I'm gonna vomit. Oh, God. Oh, 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 God. Oh, oh, I'll get sick. I can't be near. What, what do I do? Take it away from me. I'm sorry, I love you. You gotta get out of here. Yeah, I can't I breathe. They value men far more so than her. Kate is this, you know, very attractive, very articulate, very put together person is just, no matter what she she does, they don't have a lot of time or attention for her. And you think about it younger, like there was always a kid in a grade that someone would say, oh, has cooties and the spraying thing. And you just think like, as you, you know, the trauma that has to have, everyone can yeah. relate to times of being isolated or picked on, mm -hmm. but someone who really went to school all day with that type of negative thing said to suggest that somehow they're they're toxic, that if they even touched That's you, right. that it would be bad. I can't even, the psychology of that is so horrible. And so when you're, you're painting these in these movies, everyone can relate to that. You make it to the far extreme version of that. Like this was someone who was really kind of unloved by her family and not really supported by her peers. And, mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't a safe place for her. It wasn't a safe place for her at all. Right. She didn't get a lot of support or attention. She got locked into a jump house where they tortured her and beat her up. And her family laughs at that. They think that's a funny situation that she went through. But it's really painful. Yeah, and sometimes people go two ways with that, right? They either sort of, it really cripples them and they can't move forward and they live in it, or they just shut it off and ignore it. And that's kind of more this here. And as it starts to peel, we also learn that she was very overweight as a baby and as a young gal. Yep. And these are kind of secrets that she doesn't share. And in both houses we visited, the, the, the parent laughs along at the joke with the siblings at the expense, the of, expense the of the child. Right. And, right. It, and that's the line when your, your parent can't put that laugh down or actually laughs at it. That's where it really cuts. And I, I, I think you're seeing it here. It's, it's like a lot of the movies that you do. 
there is a ton of comedy, but there's something real at its base as well. And you're dealing with real relationship issues. Think of what makes the movies, you know, you want to watch them. It's not just a surface level comedy. You have a good knack and you can see it for being able to play the more dramatic stuff, you know, but also to be funny in it. And I think the movies that kind of stand the test of time have something anchored with them that you're kind of pulling along that you can relate to on an emotional level, but they also satisfy on the comedic level as well. Redneck hippie and gas money. So we arrive at um, Brad's mother's house. Here it's sort of California kind of cool hippie. It's almost Tom Petty. It's like redneck hippie. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, so it's like it's got that kind of rustic or rural, but it's sort of groovy. Your house is beautiful. Oh, thank you. This is gorgeous. Well, you knew Bradford lived with me after the divorce. Denver and Dallas were more comfortable with Howard, but... Bradford was the more sensitive type. Okay, you know, I was thinking... Oh, we were just best friends, just inseparable. My God, he breastfed until he was five. Thought I was going to have to take you to college. Okay, I, I think <laughs> you've had enough of it. The a... only one who was on my tits more was a professor that I dated after his father. Can you not, can you not say tits, please? Hey, right. kids! Okay, this is Daryl. Hi, nice to meet you. It yeah. is so nice to meet you, young lady. And always great to see you, big guy. Hey, how is traffic getting out here, huh? You know what? Can I get your gas money? I'd really like to get your gas money. You know, actually, I, I don't need you to uh, get my gas money. Thank you. I actually make a lot more than you do. So, uh, no thank Bradford, you. Bradford, be nice. It's okay, sweetie. Look, Brad, I'm not trying to be your father. He already got one of those. I'm just hoping for a chance to be your friend. You were my friend, Daryl. You were my best friend. We grew up together, we rode bikes together, we used to smell each other's hands. But now you're sleeping with my mom and it's a little bit weird for me. Can you appreciate that? Yeah, um, so the idea was like, I always thought it was fun when people would say, I don't want to be your dad. I just want to be your friend. So I had the idea of like, well, what if it really was your friend? <laughs> right. Just for that whole thing was fun to me to make it like that speech that every every guy would give, but have it really be the history that it was really your best friend. Right. So that was sort of the angle to get into that. So it's just funny, Van Horn does a great job. He was from Swingers, yeah, so I went for and sure. asked him. And, and uh, he does it so great, he comes in real happy and trying to be nice and Earnest. Off offering gas money, which would be the normal <laughs> right. thing. And so slowly the audience along with uh, Kate is catching so up and Reese does a really good job of reacting and being real That's and right. grounded and, and taking it in. And you can tell she's putting together this very peculiar situations. And obviously uh, you get into the Pictionary and it goes you know, in a comedic way to show that these couples know each other and really have a real relationship and we really have been living you know kind of on the surface and don't know as much about each other yeah not only these couples but kind of these couples that you guys have been judging they're actually in some ways starting to reveal maybe more authentic know yeah. more about each and other a better relationship Pete, it's the holidays yes what do you think about you think about food you and i were we're, we're dudes we love food oh yes we <laughs> love cooking we love cooking for and with our families yes and we're going to be doing a lot of cooking on our traeger this holiday season yes in fact we're gonna fire it up and we're gonna do a turkey on the Traeger and we're gonna smoke a pie for dessert. Done. So many great products. They have rubs, they have sauces. At Traeger.com, you can get all of your cooking needs right. right there in one stop. And I've been using the Wi-Fi connectivity, which means that I can monitor the temperature, the duration of the cook, right on the Traeger app on my phone. Right. I don't even have to be at home. So for something like the size of a turkey, I get it on, I get the probes in it, and I just start to watch this thing as it cooks. I don't have to keep opening the lid, right, doing the right. push test, second guessing, hoping mm -hmm. that it's done. I know exactly to the number what the internal temperature is, and I basically just wait until it's done. They have the pellets. They have different flavored pellets. That's right. They have right. different sauces and rubs and everything. It, it, it's all encompassing. So whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned veteran, Traeger has the right grill for you. These grills are available in all different types at Traeger.com, mm -hmm. and they have a sale going on right now. They don't do a lot of sales. It's $300 off select grills. Go to Traeger.com, check it out. Goes it alone. The last house is Kate's father, yeah. played by John Voight. Yes. Um, and just for a little context, going into this one, Brad and Kate at this point, coming out of the Sissy Spacek moment, have kind of had an argument where 
she wanted to have some deeper conversations about babies and it's frustrated it's frustrated Brad he doesn't even want to entertain the conversations right. and they they kind of split in the driveway he drops her off in front of her dad's house right it's exactly what they said in the car in the first place saying no matter what happens today I'll still be there for you and they're not Hey kiddo Hey dad Did Brad leave to get a jump start on inoculating babies in Burma? What? Maybe he's making sock monkeys for foster kids. Or weaving <laughs> ponchos for pregnant women in the Yucatan. <laughs> so I guess you knew we were lying. Oh boy. Unfortunately, I've had a lot of experience bending the truth to avoid my family. And I'll tell you, honey, I would give anything to have that time back again. I would too. It's taken me a lot of years, and several divorces, to learn that nothing really beats being honest. Honest about who you are, what you need, all the rest tends to work itself out. I was honest. And I think he was too. It just wasn't what I wanted to hear. Paints a different picture in the fourth house. Yeah. This house is in harmony. It's, it's moving nicely. The family's making an effort. This is the first environment we're sort of feeling that there's some growth. Yeah, there's forgiveness. That's right. right. And there's very real performances, which is due to good writing. And yeah. good performances. Right? I remember you writing this scene in your trailer um, moments before we shot, um, because then there was a version of it that wasn't landing the plane. And you were vigil vigilantly working on this thing um, to, I think, land on that notion of John taking culpability and saying that there's nothing more important than honesty and that he was yearning to have those years back with her for when he had been dishonest. And the sort of theme of the movie is, is kind of pulled out, which is this notion of honesty. You start with characters that are quite dishonest with each other in the sense that they're not revealing anything and, and, and growth happens when you right. kind of share and expose and are honest for better or worse, it's a better place to be. There's a prayer in this movie and it's nice. And it, it, it puts you in a nice headspace. You realize that he genuinely feels grateful in the moment for the family that he has. And he's acknowledging that in the form of a prayer. And you, you feel the tonal shift in the movie from some pretty high intense level comedy and it's slowly moving, but it's earned itself. Um, I think from what came before it. And so it feels nice in this moment. You can break the law, not the rules. There was a scene, there was a moment um, that you had suggested that, that I think, definitely made us laugh. You want to talk about that? That came right around this scene? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thing that made us laugh. It didn't make the movie. <laughs> no, it did not make the movie. No, right. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> things that make us laugh the most on set don't make the movie, right. and probably for good reasons. Right. But I, I can think of uh, maybe one other time, and I've known you a long time, we've, we've been in some funny situations yeah. Yeah. where I have, this is as hard as I've ever seen you laugh when right. we did Off this. camera, behind the monitor. 1,000%, yeah. yes. And maybe even in life. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Do you want to share the moment? Well, it kind of goes back sometimes, like my sense of humor goes to that sometimes <laughs> when someone doesn't get what they expect or something yes. kind of can be funny. But uh -huh. <laughs> there, there was a lot of improvising and green lights to do it on the, on, mm -hmm. on the, on the set. So if people you know, in character could say stuff or lines came up. We had a bunch of actors that were good and capable of that. And the actress who was playing John Voight's girlfriend was improvising a lot. She was really charming Very and daring and, and a funny. good actress. Right. Very natural. But when we were improvising, sometimes it felt like there was stuff going on in the scene and there was a level of improv that was going on that was not really on story and wasn't really about anything. Right. And so I just said to John, I gave him a note, like kind of next time if she, if she, if she jumps in, say this uh, in character as like a thing to do. And um, do you remember what it was? Um, and did she say, started um, to improvise and say, right, so I'm like, oh, we should, we should, we should, oh, you're, we should probably go and, and make sure that there's more stuff in the kitchen I could bring out to eat and yeah, I could and, probably get some and more. And he said, Cheryl, did you get everything you wanted this Christmas? Super nicely, yeah. Yeah, did you? She was like, yes. Did you have a nice day? 
Yep, I did. It was really it, great. It, it, is, there, said, yeah. is there anything else that could have been better about the day? No, I think it was pretty great. Then can you give me some damn space? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it seemed like a warm thing and a positive thing. And then, and then he was saying, like, you just got to stop talking. Give me a break here. Is, and it made us laugh so hard because it was so kind of a real moment that felt kind of short and not nice, like a couple that like, kind of mean. Yeah, and this but is it really like made the us guy laugh. from the champ. Yeah. Like when he turns, it can feel intense. Yeah, right. They right. It was just silly. Space. So we were we liked it. We put it in an early test screening because it just made us laugh. And I think literally ninety percent of the cards were confused. Why is he mad at Cheryl? What happened between them that made uh, him need space from her? Yeah, I, I vividly remember because there's always a question: Was there anything you found confusing in the movie that wasn't cleared up by the end? And but when you're done with testing, it's, you should it should be blank, right? The movie should not be confusing. Uh, <laughs> right. Answer after answer. Yes. Why did John Voight need space? <laughs> Question mark. I didn't understand. You can break the laws, they say, but not the rules. Right. So you and I were laughing hysterically by because it was the monitor. So appropriate. So it was Dwight and Yoakam. Dwight Yoakam was yeah, there. We thought it was. He funny. wasn't in the scene, so he happened to be behind the monitor yeah. watching. And f I mean, we were talking like on the floor, but because it's just as it's so unexpected, but it would never belong in the movie. But we had his kind no, of no, and clearly it wouldn't fit. Yeah. Like, why is he yeah, snapping yeah, yeah, his yeah, girlfriend yeah. in the third? Act of this movie when awesome. the seeds about healing. Um, thank you for coming in. And, Thanks for having and, yeah, and indulging you. This us. It's been so fun. This was a lot of fun yeah, this, to this was to a step great through this movie. Thank you, brother. The smart one. So as we talked about with Vince, the the prayer scene, the scene about forgiveness, we noticed there was an empty chair. Yep. At the table, Brad Vince's character has left, um, and this leads us to for him. The meeting of the mentor. Absolutely. Let's take a look. What the hell do you want? You forgot your tampons? No, I didn't forget anything. I just came by to see you. Oh, what for? I mean, you already destroyed my TV and family room. Oh, you, you want to bust up my kitchen as well? Oh, look, I'm sorry about that. Uh, oh. You know, I didn't mean to do all of that. I was actually just We're trying tiny. to. tiny. She didn't come. Well, Kate, uh, <clears throat> she's not with me. Oh, she finally smelled the pathetic on you, did she? No. In, in fact, uh, she said that she wanted to get more serious with me. Yeah, she said that, uh, you know, uh, she loved me and she, she wanted to see herself having a family with me, having kids with me. Well, congratulations. Is that what you want to hear? But I said no, Dad. You what? Yeah, I told her I didn't want to get married. Are you shitting me? Mm-mm. I'll be damned. I'll be damned. That's my boy. <laughs> you know, I always said you were the smart one, Lando. Your mind and spirit are strong like mine. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, it's always the one you fight with the most is the most like you. Well, what do you stand out here for? Well, we go inside and have a drink, just the two of us. Man to man, <laughs> father to son, all right? Merry Christmas, Dad. Yeah, Merry Christmas. You're a big boy now. Let's go in and take appraisal of the damage you've done. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so in this case, yeah, the mentor is his dad. Yep. And um, he gets a piece of advice, the, seemingly confirming what he thinks, not the traditional advice. I mean, this is a man who never gave Brad his approval. And now at the end of this mess, when Brad finally gets his approval, it's Brad no longer needs it or wants it. Yeah, it certainly seems that he's conflicted after getting the approval of his dad, for sure. And it's a piece of advice that, you know, normally the mentor would say, no, 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 choose life, choose love, choose happiness, go back and claim your girl. And he says, a boy, let's go get drunk. Yeah, this is a reversal. You know, you're a chip off the old block. You always were my favorite. Is That's the beauty of this is, you know, the reversal of this thing. And it's like... You get this thing, you get this knowledge, you get this gift, you get this package of what to do and, you, and you've and you changed and you know this is not the right way to go. I do not want to be like this. And a happy new year. 
our lead now has some new information and let's see where it goes as we lead into the end of conflict of four Christmases. Hey. Okay, listen. If you get one, you might as well get two because they're like dogs. What are you talking about? I'm talking about kids. If you leave one by itself at home, you're never going to leave because you're going to feel so guilty about it being there by itself. But if there's two, you don't feel bad because they got someone to play with. The other big thing to think about is school. Like, do you send them to private school? Because then you got sweater vest and lacrosse coming at you all day. But if you go to public school, you got to worry about some art student who's hyperactive, who's all hopped up on medications. You might try to shank the little guy, and that's uncomfortable too. Are you having this conversation with me because you're comfortable having this conversation with me? Or are you just having this conversation with me because you want to go to Fiji? I want to go to Fiji because the tickets are already paid for and, you know, the hotel rooms aren't transferable. But, honey, to, I, 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 I do feel comfortable now, I think, having this conversation because in my heart I know that I found the one person in life that I want to have these conversations with. And that person's you. I love you so much. So it's like, this doesn't mean that we're getting married or having kids right away. No, no, no. But we should talk about it because these things do happen. Yeah. Not that we're planning on it, but we're just talking about it because these things happen. So it's, <laughs> it's good. Yeah. He's realized that maybe it's okay just to have the conversation. Have the conversation. It's on his mind. But there's just the conversation. And literally that's kind of the growth to this moment. Right. Just that we're kind of allowed to talk about it. Beginning of the movie, won't even have, have no. Off the table, never discuss it. Our minds are made up. The boundaries are changed, um, even though there's a few new boundaries. Yes, yeah, that's right. There, but, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but they're open, to the, they're open to being open. Well, I'll give you some insight into this scene. It's not uncommon to look at a movie in the edit room, think you kind of found it, but say, oh, what we now need, we know what we need. It's this, this, and this, and right. maybe even particularly the ending. It happens a lot on comedies. You know, there are definitely reshoots. Such was the case here to get this just right. As we said, it's just the movement to a conversation. And so the scene that we just saw is the result of um, additional photography later after production was complete. The movie had been through the edit and there was a decision to, to land on the idea of him somewhat being open to kids. Problem is now you got to execute that, right? right? And so I think Vince had moved on, obviously, to do other movies. So at Reese, they got their schedules right. And when they came to the set, think whoever they had hired to do the script pages, it wasn't really up to snuff of the rest of the movie, what they had done. And there was some concerns, but <laughs> Vince didn't sign up to be a writer. And this, 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 this happens sometimes. And then it's sort of a snowball effect. So he said, fine, but we got to shut down. I'll put it on my back. So the movie was shut down for couple of days while Vince went off, figured out what this really needed to be, was able to execute dialogue for both him and Reese. And the result of it was not only the scene that we just saw, but we have one more uh, moment of this movie to get to, which is the resolution, which was also created by him. Let's take a look and then we'll break it down. We have a baby. Yeah. What's she doing? Hey, she's sleeping. Just wanted to let you and our little New Year's baby know that you're welcome to start bringing in family members now. Oh, well, that's not going to oh, happen. Oh, yeah, we're not going to bring you. our family now. Mm. Your families don't know you had a baby? To be honest, I think they uh, would be shocked to even hear Kate was pregnant. Our families can be a little much sometimes. I like to kind of think of it like we're just sort of keeping it special for us rather than not including them. Happy New Year, Bay Area. We are here live at Pacific General where the first baby of the new year has just been born. Let's go say hello to those lucky parents. Congratulations, McVie family, on having the first baby of the new year. Dad, how does it feel? Um... We're doing great. And then um, there was uh, a vacuum. And then, and then there was um, um, stretching and, and the uh, uh, juices. What he's trying to say is that we're just beyond words excited. <coughs> oh. <coughs> oh, goodness. It's funny. Oh, uh, it's good. So it's all settled. They've now had a baby. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying we're okay to talk about it. They're still maybe keeping it from the family. Of course, that's foiled. And then the final joke is a callback to um, what had turned out to be, I think, one of the or the highest testing comedy moments in the movie was that moment we looked at at his, um, 
at Kate's mom's house when the baby vomits and Vince is trying to hold it back and can't. So it's it's nice to recall a really funny scene earlier in the movie. Yeah, it's that scene. I mean, I've seen this film now many times doing this process for this podcast and I've laughed out loud every single time. I know, it still gets you. It's the shock of getting you. He, he crushes it and then, it, it's you know, so it's, good. it's funny. I know. So where does this this movie sit for Christmases in the pantheon of Christmas movies? You tell um, me. Well, again, in speaking to a lot of people, um, it's mentioned frequently. The comedy, um, a lot of people love that it's a little edgier than most um, sort of maybe more saccharine Christmas movies. Um, the cast. The cast is so good. $164 million dollars box office worldwide. Um, so it's certainly not just my opinion. The fans agree. They went out to see this movie. Check the iTunes around the Christmas season, and this movie is uh, sneaking up in the top ranks every single year. Yeah, another one of those great movies that between Thanksgiving and Christmas, it, it just rolls right in and grabs on you. I agree. Instantly relatable and really fun to break down with Vince Vaughn and Jeffrey and you, Kimball. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a privilege to have everybody that really had their fingers in the turkey <laughs> it's the perfect Give us metaphor. All, tell us what happened. Yeah, plugging those turkey holes. Uh, My friend Nick, thanks very much. Merry Christmas. Enjoyed man. it. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night.